Dr. Prufer here. So I'm doing a live video today debunking some common myths associated with undergraduate degree selection before medical school. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a little series of myth debunking videos in our mastermind group. So if you have ideas, you have a myth you want me to debunk or a question, just comment on this video and I'll consider it for a future video. So also as we're going along, I'm watching the group, I'm watching the feed, so feel free to jump in and ask questions. I'll get to them at the end. So like I said, this is our pre-med undergraduate degree selection mastermind debunking session. So I'm gonna cover a couple of topics that commonly come up with students or that I've seen in the group this week. So here's our myths. So first myth, I need to go to an Ivy League school. So this is absolutely not true. You see a lot of students who go to Ivy League schools and it actually ends up hurting their GPA because the schools are so competitive, the bell curve is so aggressive, and realistically you're competing against the best of the best. And Ivy League, you're going to have to work that much harder to get the same GPA that, than you would at another school. And not to say that the courses are harder, it's just that the competition is a lot tougher and when you're dealing with a bell curve, then, you know, it's a little bit more difficult. So what you really want to be doing is choosing the best school for you, the best fit, something that suits your learning style, whether you like small classes or large classes, and that's going to enable you to get the highest GPA with the least amount of work. This is super important because if, as a pre-med, you need to balance your schedule. You need a high GPA, but you also need great extracurriculars, volunteer work. You really need to be able to show that you're a well-rounded person. If you're in a super competitive degree program, and spend all your time studying, you're not going to be able to do that and you're not going to be able to build the skills like communication and leadership that the med schools are looking for and that you need in order to become a great doctor. So that's a total myth. You don't need to go to an Ivy League school to prepare for med school. Our second myth, so I need to take a pre-med program. So at BMO we always encourage students to pursue their passions. If the pre-med program is what you're passionate about, then absolutely pursue that. Um, but you're, you will be fine if you don't take a pre-med degree. Lots of students get into medicine after engineering, they get in as mature students, they get, get in after taking a physics degree. Realistically, it doesn't matter which degree you take as long as you can get in all those prerequisites. So choose something that you really love that you're naturally gonna be able to do well in. That's gonna give you the best chances of having a high GPA. You'll be more engaged in your classes. You'll perform better relation, or you'll, you'll form better relationships with your professors, enabling you to get better reference letters or research positions. And you'll just overall be happier and more balanced. So choose a degree that you love. You don't have to go into pre-med. You could, you can if you want, but you don't have to. Your undergraduate degree should really be about exploring your passions, and part of that may be trying things outside of pre-med. Next, we have one that came up in the group this week. So, I need to take X science degree to prepare for the MCAT. So, this is so not true. <laughs> um, I'm just refreshing my computer there. So, the MCAT is basically, you don't need knowledge that's higher than, say, a 100 level science course. To be honest, when I did my MCAT, I felt that most of the knowledge was almost, you know, fourth year high school based science knowledge. The problem with the MCAT really isn't the knowledge, it's the breadth of the knowledge and it's also the formatting of the test. The most helpful thing for preparing for your MCAT is actually doing MCAT practice exams. For me, the, my first one, I got maybe less than 50% and gradually over time I improved and improved and improved, mostly just by doing the test. My knowledge base wasn't actually getting that much larger because I did come from a science background, but realistically you don't need these super hard degrees to prepare yourself for the MCAT. What you do need is possibly a prep course, definitely a prep book, and a big pack of pa practice exams. Plus, if you're taking a less intensive degree, it's going to give you more time to study for your MCAT outside of school and to have that well-balanced resume like we were talking about before. So you absolutely don't need to be taking these high level organic chemistry, biochemistry courses to prepare for the MCAT. You never hear someone say you need to take like high level physics to prepare for the MCAT because you don't. You basically need high school physics. Um, so those 100 level courses, those will be fine in order to prepare you for the MCAT. Basically anything that you need for your prerequisites for med school will help you to prepare for the MCAT. 
So don't worry about taking those really difficult science courses. They're just going to hurt your GPA unless you're passionate and you really want to take that course. So I'm just going to check for questions here. So it looks like we don't have any questions for today. If you guys think of topics that you'd like me to cover in the future, myths you'd like to have busted, just comment below. I'm also going to post a link to some of our pre-med course selection resources on the blog, so take a look at those if you're looking for more information. Otherwise, have a great day. I'll see you all next week.